This is Late Junction on BBC Radio 3. Time now to catch up with The Cube in Bristol just to find out how they're faring during this period of uncertainty. I was there for exposure um, not so long ago. It's a gorgeous, small, old cinema which is still resplendent in wood and red velour. But it's actually been all sorts of things over the years. It's been a speakeasy, a gay avant-garde art space, an Amdram theatre. But now it's kind of hosting everything from music to cinema to uh, children's events. But it's always got this leaning towards the more unusual and experimental. So Rodri Karim is part of the team running it. You actually run a night, don't you, Rodri, called Witch Please? Maybe you should start by telling us what that's about. All right. Okay, yeah, so Witch Please, we call it an occult post-human ritual performance party. And for me, it's very much about welcoming the kind of non-human and the darker sides of the queer experience into a space. And I started realising that something that was missing from from my kind of queer community was these bonding experiences. Like a lot of the queer kind of lifestyle is based around drinking and socialising, and I just didn't feel like that spoke much to to my experience of the world, which is far more kind of icky and sticky and elemental and, and pagan. Mm. And so trying to weave those two aspects together and um, sort of generate new monsters and myths for, for me and my friends to inhabit. That sounds absolutely fantastical, actually. I mean, non-human states, does that mean everybody's, I don't know, dressing up and stuff? Or? Yeah, so I'm uh, the host, I'm Queer Wolf, so I'm a uh, trans species troublemaker. <laughs> you know, like when you read... Um, folk tales and, and mythology there's this idea that they're all parts of us like archetypes or things that we could evolve into in our in our greatest uh, dreams or our worst nightmares and that idea of like all the little critters that inhabit the corners of your vision and the little nooks and crannies of your mind to bring them out drag yourself up as them and give them life in that space and uh, yeah that's the idea <laughs> so that kind of a night's quite normal right for the cube i think so and it's nice because it helps to um weave together a few different interests that we have in the venue, which is this idea of like space and what could we what can we do in the space. There's a big experimental music component to the party as well. So we get drone in and we're really interested in kind of ambient music and the performative ways in which you can get into altered states and generate new ways of being with each other. And I think the venue as a whole is like a little creche uh, or container for baby ideas to be fed by the enthusiasm of all the volunteers. And it's this crazy vortex that spins our offhand ideas into, into realities. It's really beautiful. And it's got a very fascinating way that it's run, isn't it? Because you're all volunteers, right? And um, also not for profit, but also your decision making about what's going to be put on is done, I don't know, purely non-hierarchically? Uh, we'd like to think so. True community for me means like really holding people who have wildly different viewpoints and wildly different ways of doing things in the cube is lucky enough to be able to support that because we really empower like everybody to take an idea from start to finish so if you have a, an impulse then all the support is there and all the enthusiasm is there of the volunteer body to put it on we don't really believe in squashing some people's ideas over another if there's space for it put it on so we are all volunteers the only person who's paid is the bookkeeper because the law tells us that we have to it is very much about taking those spontaneous desires and amplifying them up with uh, the resource of this space and this volunteer body who validate each other in their weirdness and ways of, uh, of working. Um, so the programming yeah, is very kind of chaotic, I would say, and non-hierarchical in the sense that we, we, yeah, we program what we like and we kind of have strands of programming in, in that intersect and influence each other, a bit like a conversation. And I would have thought that model's quite resilient in a period like we're experiencing now, right? So, I mean, how's it been since the beginning of the pandemic? I imagine you've all just come together and come up with amazingly brilliant ways of, of getting through this. Yeah, we've given it a go, for sure. I think it was very quickly that we um, realised that stuff was going to get weird and we weren't going to be able to use the physical space of the venue. Um, so we have set up a streaming server and a lot of work has been done in the volunteer body to make sure that that can support the same capacity as the cube itself. So it's about a hundred, just over a hundred people who can, who can log on to that stream. And we've done a few uh, events with that already. We screened a documentary about Tony Conrad, who is a performance artist and kind of experimental weirdo in the 20th century. And that was sold out and really well attended. And there was a Q and A as part of that. And we also have like a regular blue screen night, which is an open film night. So filmmakers can kind of bring whatever they have and show their work in front of an audience of kind of engaged and critical people. So there's been two of those so far and they are happening pretty regularly. Um, 
And it really makes us think about physical mediums as being something that seem to have been forgotten or maybe thought of as too complex in this current crisis. So one thing we've been doing is putting together a quarantine and getting contributions from volunteers and further afield and then producing a physical zine and hand delivering it to people in Bristol and, and surrounding to kind of maintain that mushroomy, mycelial, actually connected network of physical bodies that I think makes things so wonderful. Brilliant. Um, and funding? Are you, are you worried? Have you got rent and stuff? Uh, well, interestingly enough, the, we bought the building just over five years ago. So the, the volunteer body came together and kind of decided the lease was coming up and a bunch of the volunteers who'd been involved th from the beginning had the sentiment that the project had to, had to sort of end or transform in some way. So the idea was, was uh, floated to buy the building. And so with public donations and a little bit of help from the Arts Council, we were able to actually purchase the freehold on the building. And so we actually own the space and have been paying ourselves rent for the last five years. Uh, we have a community land trust. So that means that the venue can't ever be used for anything other than weirdo arts purposes. Um, and so we've been able to essentially pause that rent. Thankfully, we're in a quite a resilient space. Uh, when this crisis hit, it allowed us to stop our activities without panicking a huge amount about income and as a result do things like the quarantine for free so it's nice to have the freedom which comes with like self-determination and ownership to allow that chaos to continue to exist and it's like hard in this uh, current environment but also just generally with the pressures that are on music venues and the pressures that are on musicians to defend that kind of gooey soft weirdness so we're really happy that we've been able to do that. But yeah, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. We're going to have to think a little bit more inventively. And I'm sure you will, Rodri. Um, it's great actually to hear all of that. So can you suggest something that we can play that kind of reflects what goes on at the Cube and is suitably weird for us tonight? Oh, sure, yeah. So we have been recording a lot of the stuff that happens at our venue with the permission of the artists. And today I have for you, something from a local uh, songwriter and something, someone that's very dear to my heart and I think is actually, yeah, I'm, I, I don't think I can go too superlative in terms of my like admiration for them and their songwriting. It's incredibly precise and super min minimal and skeletal and really speaks directly to things that are not normally utterable, I think, in human society. And that's something that The Cube for me has always been a shelter for, these experiences and these parts of myself that don't have a home anywhere else. And so this is a track by Rosina, and I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but it's fresh from the archive of The Cube, is that right? That's correct. So this is uh, from a recording in, I think, September 2019. She's got a vagina, she's a very naughty boy What could have possessed her didn't want to be a boy Not supposed to cry Can't be a mother Not supposed to She's got a vagina, she's a very naughty boy What could have possessed her didn't want to be a boy It's 
So, fresh from the archive at the Cube in Bristol, that is Rosina, as picked up for us there by Rodri Karim. Um, my thanks to him for joining us tonight and just uh, telling us about all the incredible things that they've been doing since um, the whole pandemic started. And really good to hear how resilient they are and hopefully will be into the future. You're listening to Late Junction on BBC Radio 3.